Hello guys, welcome to a new episode of Matthew's Sports Talk. Meant to film this episode last night, but I was just a little bit too tired. So, anyway, without any further ado, I have Power Ring Games from last week. Now, once again, I'm not going to go over the entire list. I will make a few notable exceptions just because I need to talk about some teams. But, for the most part, I will only be concerning myself with the top 15. So, and away we go. Most notably is the 9-spot drop by the Dallas Cowboys. I had them dropping from number 16 all the way to number 25. Yes, I do have a 500 team ranked 25th in my power rankings. Why is that you said? Why is that you say? Because the Cowboys are just a wreck. And this is the point where Jerry Jones becomes a clown and is absolutely ridiculed. He just, he lost, he, he's probably lost the fan base. I know if I were the fan of the Dallas Cowboys, I'd be calling for Jerry Jones to retire or die. One of those two things. Um, I'm still not probably in Dallas right now. If I was in Jerry's shoes, not as a general manager, but as the owner. So say, for example, if I was the owner, Jerry Jones was the general manager, and then the coaches were, I would fire in this order, Jerry Jones being the general manager, Mike McCarthy the head coach, and Mike Zimmer as defensive coordinator. That just is what it is. I mean, it's just it's just bad. Um, next most notable team only dropped one spot at from number twenty two to number twenty three. The Jets after losing Monday night to the Buffalo Bills. Um, you know Aaron Rodgers did look better, but there comes a point of time where even if you're an interim head coach, you have to understand. If your kicker misses not one field goal, because that's understandable, two field goals, it's kind of like, mm, you're a little bit hesitant. He missed three field goals. Like, and when you lose by three, this shit kind of matters. There's a point in time where even if you're the interim head coach, you have to realize the kicking game is just not there. You got to go switching. You got to go for it. It just not was just not there, period. And the Jets could be same right now at three and three if they had, they had just followed that philosophy instead of two and four, and they would have been in first place of the AFC East. All right, any other notable ones on? Nope, not until okay. So now let's get into the top fifteen. At number fifteen, I had to move them up three spots because I had to move teams down. Really didn't want to put them here. Number 15, Philadelphia Eagles. Now, let's address Nick Sirianni for a minute. Because there's two coaches in the NFC East right now that I feel like should get fired. One being, obviously, Mike McCarthy. Second would be Nick Sirianni. He clowned his fans and absolutely embarrassed them. You know. you They booed you. I mean, you beat the Cleveland Browns, one of the worst teams in the league, by four points at home. Philadelphia Eagles fans want their team to win, and not just win, but perform excellently. That's not a good performance, man. Like, yes, you got the win. Big freaking whoop de doo By four points against one of the worst teams in the league at home. Need I say more? So, yeah, it's just... Absolute clown behavior. I, and if I was the GM of the Philadelphia Eagles, I want to tolerate it. Nick Sirianni would be out the fucking door. So that's number 15, the Colts. Number 14, ugh. They moved up six spots. I had to do it. The 4-2 and two Chicago Bears, even though that's a fake 4-2. and two, They beat up on an absolutely shitty Jaguars team in London. Like... Big fucking whoop de doo okay? But I had to move them up because of their record and because I had to move teams down. So, at number 13, staying there, number the 49ers. Um, oh, yeah, 49ers beat the Seahawks on Thursday night last week. 
Number 12, staying there, the Green Bay Packers, 4-2. You guys beat the Arizona Cardinals. Okay. Yeah, beat the Arizona Cardinals. Big whoop de doo I'm curious to see what happens this weekend when you play the Houston Texans. <laughs> so, yeah. Finally, outside of the Vikings, the Packers have a test this weekend. So, that'll be interesting to see. Staying at number 11, and I kind of just... Mm, I don't know where to just stick this team, but they were on by, so I kind of just left them here. Los Angeles Chargers. At number 10, they did fall five spots because of their loss, but the I still think the Washington Commanders are a good team. They lost to the Ravens, which is another good team. Only lost by seven points, so yeah. Up one spot, number nine, Pittsburgh Steelers. You beat the Raiders. This is in my heart on file, but I feel like because of your defense, your defense keeps you in the top 10 spot. Staying number eight, after a win against the Jets, the Buffalo Bills. Staying number seven because of their win against the Carolina Panthers, the worst team in the league, which I still have at number 32. Atlanta Falcons up three spots, putting up 50 plus on the New Orleans Saints. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. At number five, even though they won, I had to drop them because I felt like the teams ahead of them were better this week. Um, that is the Houston Texans. Up two spots at number four is the Baltimore Ravens. I didn't have to move down the Chiefs one spot on their bye week, even though they're undefeated. Because, and I prefacize this, I mean, I'm going, this is just because I need this to be a put up or a shut up weekend for this team. Number two, up two spots, Detroit Lions. And then at number one, staying there on the bye week, the Minnesota Vikings. That's right. I set up a number one, a number two power ranked matchup this weekend. Because I truly feel like this is a put up or shove game. All right? Between the Vikings and the Lions. That's what I need. Because I'm so... Lions fans have become the absolute worst when it comes to shit talking. I mean, good God. You guys had one good season and now you think you're the hot shit. I've stated this before, you know? Just big fucking whoop de doo So yeah, that's my power rankings for this week. Now I do have the matchup predictions for this week. Um, God, give one second. Hydrate with, not a sponsor. Blue Raspberry Sparkling Lemonade from Caribou Coffee. Ah, remember, all my shit is unedited. It's just one shot. I don't stop because unless something crazy terrible happens, I don't stop recording. All right. So this week I have predictions of, so today is the Thursday night game, Saints and the Buck. Broncos, nobody cares except for the fact that Sean Payne's returning to New Orleans, whatever. Um, I have Saints over the Broncos within six. And then the London game this week, Patriots and Jaguars, oh my God, set my heart ablaze, you know. I'm pretty sure, let me review my notes. I have, It's the number 31 ranked Jaguars that I have in my power rankings against the number 29 ranked Patriots. Oh my God, someone called the presses. Big fucking whoop to do. Um, I think Patriots are. Patriots over Jaguars with M4. And then Falcons and Seahawks. I have Falcons over Seahawks within seven. Bills over Titans within 14. Um, the only reason that I still have it that close is because I think t Titans actually have a decent defense. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, Bengals over Browns, I'll say within seven. Texans over Packers within 10. I honestly believe the Texans are a much better team again than the Packers. So, yeah. Colts over Dolphins. I ha I originally had Dolphins in this game, and I originally thought I would have it as a pick em game. Um, for the, those of you who don't know, if I say within three, that's essentially a pick em game. Um, I changed it, though. I, I, I have the Colts over the Dolphins now, and I have it within four. So, almost a pick em game, but not quite. Um, then I have Eagles over Giants within seven. Here's the pick'em game. Uh, I have the Rams over the Raiders within three. You know, I just really don't know. I mean, 
right now I would say the Raiders are a better team. Actually, I know I moved the Rams because of certain teams this week, so I'm wondering. I have the Rams at number 26, and then I have the Raiders at number 24. So, yep, I'll still have that as a pick game. Um, Chiefs over 49ers. I think it's going to be an interesting good game. Um, I'm going to say Chiefs within 6. Commanders over Panthers within 10. Um, I wanted to put more, but I feel like the Commanders are probably still... Have a little bit of a hangover from that game last week against the Ravens. Steelers over Jets with him for, I think, good defensive game. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, then two very good Monday night football games. Well, at least one very good one. Uh, Ravens and Buccaneers. I have Ravens within six. And then Cardinals and Chargers. I have that as a pickup game. I have Cardinals over Chargers within three. And then comes, I do not have yet. I mean... Okay, I have two ideas for the Vikings and Lions game. On the one hand, I think, oh, the Lions lost Aiden Hutchinson to broken tibia. He's out for the season. Very, very sad. Without their best defensive player, I think Vikings going to win. But then there's this Aaron Jones shit. If Aaron Jones plays, I think that's the key. So I have two different predictions. Which I'm not going down yet because I don't know what the status is yet of Aaron Jones. So, we shall see. We shall see. All right? So, yep. That's that for you guys. Um, I just realized I still haven't filmed that Minnesota Twins postseason analysis. I'll just go over it quick with you guys, okay? Shit happened that I think needed to happen. You know, GM no longer with the team. He's gone. They're looking for a new GM. And Polites are selling the team. Okay? So, due to the epic collapse of this season, two things that needed to happen is happening. So, thank you, God. As you can see, the twins have been restored to my wall. You know, because, I mean, Eldridge, I mean, we'll see. I think the Wilts, Ziggy Wilf and Mark Wilf, owners of the Vikings should buy the Twins. That's who I think should buy the Twins because I know they, I mean, $2 billion, I know they have that. So, and then, I mean, how many people can say they own two sports teams? So yeah, there's that. Anyway, especially in Minnesota, that's big. Okay, guys, so yep, um, I'll have my Vikings and Lions prediction. All it depends on when they announce the status of Aaron Jones, probably Friday night or Saturday night. All right, guys? Until then, like, subscribe, share, and etc. Alright, have a good one guys. See ya.